A very clear message from Jewish students flying above Harvard's Cambridge campus today as fallout continues for the heads of the elite universities who failed to outright condemn calls for genocide, for, for genocide, excuse me, against Jewish people. Watch this. It's a context-dependent decision. That's your testimony today. Calling for the genocide of Jews is depending upon the context. That is not bullying or harassment. This is the easiest question to answer yes, Ms. McGill. So is your if testimony it, that it, you will not answer yes? If it uh, is, if the, yes speech or becomes, no. if the speech becomes conduct, it can be harassment, yes. Boy, that was a tricky question, I guess. The president of the University of Pennsylvania followed up with this apology uh, that hasn't convinced some of the critics. Watch this. I was not focused on, but I should have been. The irrefutable fact that a call for genocide of Jewish people is a call for some of the most terrible violence human beings can perpetrate. Okay, let's bring in Katie Pavlich, editor at townhall.com and former Democrat Congressman Patrick Murphy of Pennsylvania, former Undersecretary of the Army, now a professor at Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, welcome to, to both of you. And um, Patrick, let me start with you um, because you, you know, have um, a role at that university. I, what really strikes me when I look at her apology and I watch, I rewatch that really stunning testimony is why is it so difficult? Why do they seem to need, you know, pre-programmed statements? It almost, I don't know if she was reading off a teleprompter, but it certainly sounded like that. Why can't a president of the most prestigious universities in this country speak off the cuff and from the heart about the fact that obviously any call for genocide uh, is a call to, to be in support of killing people, killing Jewish people? What is going on here? Yeah, I, I, listen, it was not a great day uh, for the three premier higher education institutions in the world. Uh, and I, there's no excuse for it. And I think that's why all three of them have come out now with, with statements. Uh, President Gay at Harvard came out and said that we will hold people accountable. That's anything. So, again, it was not a great day. Uh, so we're making no excuses. Martha, you know, I used to teach constitutional law at West Point uh, 20 years ago before I deployed uh, in the invasion in Iraq. And, and President McGill is a great president, and, and, but she's a, a first year, and she's a constitutional law scholar. And so maybe she was wrapped up on the First Amendment. All speeches protect on the First Amendment, except FIDO, fighting words, incitement to riot, defamation of character and obscenities. Genocide is not con context dependent. Genocide is hate speech. Genocide is not protected by the First Amendment or by academic freedom. You know, Katie, these people have bent over backwards to protect mm -hmm. any microaggression, any food mm -hmm. in the dining hall that might offend someone because it wasn't made by someone of that culture. Why is this so hard? Listen right. to this from the Harvard Hillel president, Jacob Miller, who is also baffled by the answers yesterday. Watch this young man. It's not like these uh, presidents of the universities didn't have ample time to prepare. Um, they did. They had more than a week. Uh, and, you know, at least in my case, President Gay uh, hired one of the best PR firms in Boston to help prep her. In addition to our in-house, um, you know, uh, public affairs service, um, you know, those are my tuition dollars, which, uh, which we're going to use to help prep her for this hearing. Um, and it yielded this result. And I'm just kind of baffled. It's incredible. Katie, can you imagine the founders of these once great universities having to call a PR firm <laughs> in order to understand what to yeah. say if people are chanting about genocide on your campus? Which makes the statements meaningless, of course. Yes. You know, all of these universities have a handbook about harassment. All they have to do is apply it to the Jewish students. It should cover everybody. They know what it is. They know what it says. But I've been thinking a lot about this question of how did we get here and how exactly is this happening? How is it that the leadership at the America's most elite institutions can't answer basic questions or stand up for a basic moral clarity when it comes to calls of genocide happening on their campuses? And when I was, when I was in college, I went to a state school. I didn't go to a fancy Ivy League school. And I was offered extra credit through the journalism school to go listen to one of the co-founders of the Council on Islamic Relations to speak. I never got extra credit to go listen to anyone 
on the Israeli Jewish side to speak. And just this week, that same man celebrated the October 7th attacks that happened that killed Americans, Israelis, innocent people. And so this is a systemic anti-Semitism problem that these universities have, starting with students going to the faculty, and as we saw in disgrace this week, uh, with the lack of leadership and moral courage from these university presidents. Um, and so there has to be a real look at all of the curriculum, the things that are being taught inside these departments, because it's not just about some students who maybe don't know exactly what they're dealing with in terms of the context and the content. This is happening in a very ingrained, deep way at universities across the country. Yeah. Well, they're going to start losing uh, applicants. They're going to start losing students. We heard yesterday that some of them are lowering the amount of money that it takes for a huge donation to grease the wheels to get someone in because they just don't have as many applicants anymore. And I think um, people will walk with their feet in a lot of cases. Barry Weiss has said, you know, look, parents, reevaluate whether or not this is what you want uh, for your kids. Um, thank you very much, both of you, for being here. Katie and Patrick, good to see Thanks, you both. Martha. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.